Hey, welcome back, Friendship Three Strands. We got another video. We are in the book of 1 John. We are almost done with this thing. We are in chapter five, wrapping this thing up. Uh, starting at verse one, we're in one through five today. So grab your Bibles. Let's jump in, see what we learn. 1 John chapter five, verse one through five. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever um, who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Okay, so what is John's big idea here? What is his big point? Well, he's kind of two. He's kind of talking about family, uh, our, our family dynamics. We'll get into that. And he's talking about overcoming the world. Okay, and so he begins this just by bringing this subject back around again. This is nothing new in the book of 1 John. He's reminding us yet again about our family, about our identity of who we are and how we um, manage our life based off of who we are, okay? And so this family that we're in, he starts off in verse one, he says, everyone who is, believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. Now, side note, we'll talk about this at youth group, the, Jesus is the Christ. Christ is not Jesus's last name. That was not his last name. Jesus didn't have a last name. He was Jesus of Nazareth, right? From the town of Nazareth. Christ is a title that's given to him. It's only for the Savior, the Messiah, the one who would save us. And so it's Jesus the Christ. He is the Christ who saves us. And he says, if we believe that Jesus is the Christ, he has been born of God. Part of being a Christian is believing that Jesus saves us. And it, when, we, when we believe that, when we um, acknowledge that, we confess that, we make Jesus our Savior, he is the Christ, then we are a part of this family. Okay, you and I, we're Christians, we're part of this family. We, and so this dynamic starts by believing in Jesus, having faith in him, that puts us into the family. But then he goes on and he says, um, you've been born of God and everyone who loves the Father uh, loves whoever has been born of him. And so as a Christian, because we are part of the family, part of that involves us loving the Father. If you are a Christian, you will love the Father. That's just inevitable. When you understand the love that he has from that Jesus gave us, you will love the Father. And so um, being part of the Christian family here, we believe in Jesus, we love God, we love the Son, and we love the Father. We love what he's doing. But it, it goes even further. In verse 2, he says, By this we know that, the that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. And so part of loving God, if you are going to believe in Jesus, you're a part of the family, and as part of the family, we love the Father. And because we love the Father, we want to be like him. And so we obey his commands. And he says this, when we obey his commands, when we do that and we act like that, we inevitably will love the children. We love our brothers and sisters. We love the children of the family. We are welcomed into the family through faith, and we love the Father because of that, and because we love the Father, we also love the kids. We love this, the, the other children, okay, the, the members of the family. And so we love them, and we can show that by loving and keeping God's commands, okay? So verse two, he says that, and then he says we when we uh, obey his commandments. And then verse three, he says, for this is the love of God. So we love the Father, we obey his commandments. How do I know that? How do I show that? This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So when we keep his commandments, when we do those things and we do that, that is what makes God happy. What does the Father love? He loves it when we listen to him, when we obey him. If we're disobeying, that's not, he doesn't like that. No father does. And so when we obey God, when we follow his commands, that is showing the love of God and God loves it. Now, in verse 3, he goes on, uh, he says at the end of that, and his commandments are not burdensome. They're not burdensome. Okay, being a Christian, 
doing what God has called us to do, that is not a burden. It's not something that is that should be difficult for you. Now, sometimes it maybe is, but when it is, we got to re- rethink ourselves. Okay, what does that say about me if me loving my enemies is what God has commanded me to do, and he's telling me to do that, and yet it, I, it, it's hard for me to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, so I need to think about me then. It's not no longer about them. It's, it's about me. Why do I not want to obey God? Okay, and so his command is to do this, and they're not burdensome. Now, there is a big difference. Okay, don't, don't, uh, don't miss this. There's a very big difference between God's commands and God's calling. The commands are not burdensome. That's what God has designed us to do. We are made that way to follow those commands. But the calling that he has called you to, that could be very difficult. It could be burdensome. It could put a lot of stress in your life because God's calling you into something that is difficult. But every time he calls us into there, he doesn't send us out alone. We always have him with us to help us. And so don't miss that. The commandments are not the same as a calling. Those are different. His commandments are not burdensome. Verse 4, whoever has been born of God overcomes the world. So as part of this family, when we understand the family dynamic, we are part of this family, we have overcome the world. Okay? And how have we done that? This is the victory that has overcome the world. What is our victory cry? What is our battle cry? That thing that makes us victorious? Well, it's our faith. Our faith in Jesus, believing in him, puts us into that family, and that is our war cry. That is our victory overcoming the world. And so when you are tempted with sin, when you are struggling with temptations, you can overcome them. You can beat it. How do I do that? It's not by my own strength and power. It's by my faith in Jesus. I pray to him. I ask him to help me. I give it over to him and say, I can't beat this on my own, so I'm giving it to you and help me to do that. Our faith in Jesus is the reason we can overcome the world. Okay, we can overcome our sin. Who is it that overcomes the world? This is like a rhetorical question. Who is even able? Who's, who has the power, the ability to do this? Nobody. Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. It's our faith in him that gives us the victory. He is the one who has the power to overcome, not me. And so when I believe in him and I put my faith in him, that gives me the power to overcome. Okay, so here's the, um, here's the questions for your group time, okay? What is the difference? Talk about this amongst your groups. What's the difference between God's commands and God's calling? And the second question kind of goes along with it. Has God ever called you to do something? Has God ever called you to step out in faith and do something? What is God's calling for you? Okay, um, so talk about that with amongst your groups, and I will uh, see you again real soon on Wednesday at Youth Group. See you guys.